ರಾತ್ರಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀಯಾ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ವೋ ಜೋರೇ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ನಾವು ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟೋಕೋ ಲೈಟಿಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೀಕ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೋಕೋಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೂಸಸ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಲೂಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಲೈಟಿಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಡ್ರಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಲೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಯೂಟ್ರಸ್ ನಾವು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಯ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಡ ಫೋರ್ ಪ್ಯಾರೆಟ್ ಟು ಅಬಾರ್ಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೀ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಐಸಾಕ್ಸುಪ್ರೀನ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಕ್ಲೋರೈಡ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ರಾಜುಲಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಮಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಥೆಕಿಪ್ನಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಡಿಸ್ಪೈಟ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನಲ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಲ್ಮರಿ ಎಡಿಮಾ ವಾಸ್ ಕನ್ಫರ್ಮ್ ಬೈ ಅಬ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ರೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೈಲಾಟ್ರಲ್ ಕ್ರೆಪಿಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ we have another patient here a 24 year old nalli para with a singleton pregnancy admitted for premature labor at 33 weeks with pre eclampsia at admission her bp was 14090 urine albumin 2 plus and she was given nifedipine and dexamethasone 12 hours later she had sudden dyspnea spo to drop to 86% she had dry cough and on examination she had basal creps arterial blood glass disclosed an uncompensated alkalosis x-ray and echo were suggestive of pulmonary edema now could this be due to the tocolytic now indications for tocolysis are two varieties one totally into preterm labor which is a little long term tocolysis the other one is an acute tocolysis where we give it for a very short term say for external cephalic version or delivery of a second twin when you want to do an external cephalic version or an internal podalic version or when you want to do a manual removal of placenta or when you want to put back a uterus which is inverted now tocolytics we must understand are of benefit only for very short time for shifting the woman to a tertiary care center and or for antenatal steroids prolonged tocolytics are not of any value at all so long term tocolytic treatment for the management of preterm labor does not exist you might see prescriptions of one particular tocolytic i don't want to mention if a woman wants to go she says i am going to my mother's house a tocolytic is written she complains of a little mild pain and a tocolytic is written so that kind of a tocolysis doesn't have a place now to come to our topic tocolysis in medical disorders medical disorder arising due to pregnancy and that would be a case of preeclampsia or a gestational diabetes or complication of medical disorders predating pregnancy preterm labor, labor occurring because of some cardiac uh, cause or severe anemia etc leading to preterm labor now you must understand these tocolytic drugs do not produce similar effects outside pregnancy like when you give them at other times they don't have this kind of an effect so why do they do so in pregnancy now there are a lot of pregnancy changes which are all very well aware of there is an increased blood volume decreased peripheral resistance increased heart rate high plasma catecholamine concentrations and a whole lot of other changes that a sea of changes that happen and therefore the pharmacokinetics of the drugs also change the kind of drugs that we have for tocolysis include the beta adrenergic receptors terbutalin ritodrin salbutramol and phenytoin calcium channel blockers the famous nifedipine and the oxytocin receptor antagonist atosiban and nsaids indomethacin and magnesium sulfate there are plenty of others but i won't go into all those we would like to have a perfect tocolytic which is uniformly effective in all women with complete fetal maternal safety no adverse effects either in the mother or the fetus but that does not exist if it is effective then the safety is a concern if it is safe then it may not be effective now by order that this is a, a recent publication which says that efficacy by order starts with nifedipine atosiban and uh, indomethacin in one level and then you have the beta memetics and nitroglycerin etc etc and magnesium sulfate of course now tocolytics uh, you must understand if the smooth muscle of the uterus has to relax then it has to have an effect on the smooth muscle 
But smooth muscles are present everywhere else also, including the airways, including the blood vessels, including the gastrointestinal tract, urinary bladder, ureter, etc. So thereby, the effect is not limited to the uterus. The effect is on to all the other smooth muscle, and that is why you get a whole lot of side effects. Now, the most common with beta mimetics um, would be cardiac arrhythmias and poorly controlled thyroid disease and the diabetes mellitus goes array. And tachycardia, fetal hypoglycemia can happen in the neonate as well, which we don't realize, and hypocalcemia, etc. Nifedipine can cause um, um, renal impairment. It can cause severe hypotension. Hypotension is one of the common effects of nifedipine. It can cause headache, flushing, nausea, dizziness, and sudden fetal death and distress in the fetus in the neonate. Now, indomethacin again has got effect on the kidney and on the um, uh, liver and it can cause heartburn, etc. If it is given before 32 weeks, it can cause uh, um, uh, patent ductus, um, constriction of patent ductus, arteriosis, pulmonary hypertension and a host of other problems. Mm -hmm. Nitric oxide donors can cause headache and headache and hypertension could be the metal side effects and in the neonate it can cause hypertension. Now, atosiburn is not a new kid in the block, but it has been there for some time. It is It competitively blocks oxytocin receptor and it's the only drug which acts only on the uterus, unlike the others which act on all the other smooth muscle. Efficacy is similar to nifedipine in some studies, but the side effects are therefore very minimal because it acts only on the uterus. Neonatal side effects are similar to nifedipine. So that means, you know, the neonates are not spared. They also have similar side effects. However, it needs to be given intravenous and is prohibitively expensive. Now, let us look at some medical disorders peculiar to pregnancy, gestational diabetes. The preferred drugs are nifedipine, atosiban, and indomethacin. Beta-2 agonist effects on the pancreatic beta cell result in increased insulin secretion and therefore, and also causes increased glucagon secretion. So, there's a lot of glycogen breakdown from the liver. It causes overall high blood sugar levels and can even lead to ketoacidosis and there are several reports as such. Now, in preeclampsia, what is the kind of tocolytic that we need to use? Nifedipine is useful both as an antihypertensive and also as a tocolytic. In severe preeclampsia, however, we would be wanting to give magnesium sulfate, which acts as an anti seizure drug and it also helps tocolysis. Magnesium sulfate is also useful for neuroprotection when it is given less than 32 weeks. However, it is preferable, preferable not to give nifedipine and maxilf together. Magnesium sulfate is contraindicated in myasthenia gravis and if there are certain neuromuscular disorders, then it is again contraindicated. What to do if we have a patient with a cardiac disease or they are taking some medications for the cardiac problem or if they have gone through a cardiac surgery or if they have significant pulmonary disease, I am sure you must be having a patient here and there. Smooth muscle relaxation with vasodilatate reaction with any of the um, um, tocolytic that we give that causes um, a loss in the blood pressure or a fall in the blood pressure and there is a compensatory adrenergic drive. So the catecholamines come up to increase the blood pressure and to maintain cardiac output and this causes reflex tachycardia. This causes an increase in the risk of pulmonary edema, congestive cardiac failure, arrhythmia, etc. And this can happen with any of the anti-tocolytics um, other than atosiban. So women on anticoagulants, so in such cases, if you are using a tocolytic, you need to be extremely careful about the pulse, about the blood pressure and the possibility of complications. Women on anticoagulants, it is preferable to use nifedipine or atosiban. Endomethacin is contraindicated in the presence of coagulopathy or significant liver disease. Now, uh, I told you that the most common tocolytic that we use is nifedipine and this has been approved and appreciated world over. The next would be probably indomethacin. Somehow indomethacin doesn't seem to have been picked up as well as nifedipine, though it is equally effective and could be used in various conditions. Now let us question one thing. Do they reduce neonatal mortality? Not at all. WHO recommendation on the use of tocolytic treatment for inhibiting preterm labor in 2015 said that it does not reduce neonatal mortality. So what a surprise. No clear evidence was found for the relative effectiveness of any of the tocolytic versus placebo being beneficial for neonatal mortality. So what are we going to do? 
However, no evidence could be due to small number of patients that is what we call as type 2 error or heterogeneity of studies or different entry point at the time of study. So at the moment, there is no clear evidence that tocolytics are beneficial. So do we give tocolytics at all? Am I confusing all of you? We have become accustomed to the fact that tocolytics bias time. The question is, do they work? To get an answer, we need a large-scale, multi-centered, randomized, non-blinded trial analyzed by intention to treat. Till then, we continue to give tocolysis. To summarize, no particular tocolytic agent has been proven optimal for preterm labor. Tocolytic agents have not been proven to reduce perinatal or neonatal mortality market. Therefore, it is also reasonable not to use tocolytics in the setting of preterm labor. If you don't use it, it's not criminal. Nifedipine is more effective than most of the other drugs than atosiban in, delay, in de, uh, delaying delivery for 48 hours. Beta memetics are more effective than placebo, but they are more effective than placebo. But they have major adverse effects. So throw beta memetics out. No maintenance treatment with tocolytic drugs or repeat tocolytic treatment. She goes now, comes back after one week, no repetition. Use of multiple tocolytic agents, you use nifedipine, you use maxilf, you use atosiban. No, not allowed. This should be avoided due to the risk of increasing adverse effect. Caution needs to be exercised, one, in multiple pregnancies due to increased risk of adverse effects. Multiple pregnancies are women who go into preterm labor more often. So there you have to exercise because adverse effects are also more in them. Nifedipine doses over 60 mg can cause 3 to 4 fold increase in serious side effects which includes hypotension. And be careful about fluid overload. There is a lot of fluid retention when you give many of these tocolytics because it causes smooth muscle relaxation. Do not give tocolytics if there is maternal tachycardia more than 120 and cardiac disease and if there is any infection. So with that I come to the end of my talk. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Session open for questions. Any more questions from the audience, please? Uh, Ma'am. Yes? Uh, there is no specific condition. We can use endomethacin in all situations except when there is either a hepatic impairment or when there is a renal impairment or when there is coagulopathy. Other than that, we have not gotten into the using endomethacin. That is all. Indomethacin is as good as, nifedipine scores better than indomethacin, but then indomethacin can be used in situations where you cannot use nifedipine. Supposing the patient complains of headache after the first dose of nifedipine, you can switch over to indomethacin. Yeah, that is a special indication where, you know, in a patient with polyhydramnia, indomethacin will be doubly, it's got an extra benefit of reducing the fluid volume. Yes. Ma'am, your experience with atoziban, I mean, uh, because we don't have the oxytocin receptors at less than 28 weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not a, f I mean, I don't recommend atoziban at all, but do you have, have you had any I experience? I have no experience with atoziban. It is prohibitively expensive and... Um, I don't have that kind of patients who can afford atosiban, no. There, there are lots of people. I've seen, pregnancy it, being used. Also. I've seen pregnancy. it being used. There are a lot of people who have used it. I have had conversations with it. Yeah. Yeah, people who can afford IVF definitely can afford atosiban. Yeah, but it's not because it's an IVF pregnancy. Because no, but at, can go into pregnancy. It is good. See, the only thing that you need to know is... If there is something that works equally well when you give it Absolutely. orally and when it is so much more uh, less expensive and uh, doesn't need that kind of a microgram monitoring of uh, the fluid rate, then I would prefer to give that. So that is how I suppose nifedipine, it's not just here. World over nifedipine is the drug that is, that is called as calcium channel blocker. CCB is the terminology that is used. Not exactly nifedipine. CCB is the terminology that is used. So world over CCB is the one which is being used on a uh, um, large... Maybe you're just talking about that little bit of that rescue time when nifedipine has not worked and she's borderline preterm. Yes, and you want to buy time for uh, steroids. It's not like 
nifedipine and atosipan, but only atosipan. I, I want to, yeah, agreed. That is why when I put up a case of severe preeclampsia, I said you could give IV myself, which works as an anti-seizure drug, but the dose for tocolysis is... Yeah, yeah. The dose that is required for tocolysis is a little more than what is required for what we follow for uh, the management of uh, this one. But like I said, I fully agree with you, Rajni, that uh, when we are using magnesium sulfate, it works. It has got extra benefits. Huh? You use one stone to get two mangoes. So that, that I suppose it works that way. It works as an anti-seizure. It works as a tocolytic. And it also works for neuroprotection when we use it in a case of severe preeclampsia. So it's definitely very beneficial. And you will notice that when a patient is on magnesium sulfate, the I mean, chances of her going into preterm labor becomes that much less. Three mangoes. Three mangoes. <laughs> that was a very comprehensive talk, ma'am. Because of paucity of time, maybe we should call the next speaker. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.